Hey everyone! Welcome or welcome back to my channel. This is Psyche Libertina and today we are going to look at your gut feelings and what are you supposed to do about them. So um, this is pile 3 of a 22 video series that I'm doing for you guys where we'll look at each major arcana card of the traditional Rider Waite tarot and relate it to a specific aspect of your life. So as you can see here, I have here three versions of the High Priestess card from three different decks. And for those of you who know or you know studies um, this divination art, so High Priestess talks about, you know, the intuition, your inner self, your gut feelings. It's very self-focused. It's a very self-focused energy. Um, and so that's what we'll be looking for you today. So if you're new to my channel, hello, welcome. Please feel free to subscribe if you haven't already. And if you're new to Pick a Pile, then basically I have here three piles for you to choose from. It could be the design, the art, um, the color, whichever you feel resonates with you. So um, for pile number one, we have here the High Priestess from the Elemental Wisdom Tarot deck. This is the design. There's the High Priestess from Elemental Wisdom. And the back. And for pile number two, we have here um, the Wizard's Tarot. This is the High Priestess from the Wizard's Tarot. and the back and for pile number three we have here true black this is a true black tarot high priestess from the true black tarot and the back so um once you've chosen head over down to the timestamps to see the clickable link um for your pile and i will see you there Hey there, pal number one. Thank you so much for being here. So if you chose etong um, high priestess tarot, not even the elemental wisdoms um, tarot, this is going to be a reading regarding your gut feelings, you know, that deafening voice that you're hearing, if you're hearing any of it, um, and what are you supposed to do about them. So um, per usual, I have here your pre-shuffled oracle cards just to check the energy. Um, if this is the energy that resonates with you, then definitely this is your pile. If you're not able to resonate with this energy, Energy, then most likely this isn't your pile please feel free to choose other piles it's absolutely okay to be drawn to more than one pile and similarly if you're not able to relate with any of the energies from the three piles available today then most likely there isn't any message for you on this video so um for your first oracle card you have here target a goal-oriented person um and then both money or property through an inheritance, winning, or windfall. And then you have Virgo. You have harmony. As I create, I will share harmony divine with love and care. Space clearing. Grand cross provoker. Let's move it here. And last card you have here let go, relax, and release. Okay, so let me look at your cards first. Um, with the High Priestess card from this deck, um, so initially I felt that, at least for your gut feeling, there is something or you feel that something is supposed to change. Earlier, I wasn't really sure if it's supposed to change. Um, it's, you know, it's something that you're supposed to change with the environment. But now that I'm seeing your cards um, clear to me that there is something that you need to change within yourself. And it's something that you're, you might or might not be aware, but most likely you are aware. Um, because for this High Priestess card, I remember that... Um, just to share, you know, um, I, I got this deck as a replacement because the initial one had an issue. The high priestess word 
it wasn't um it wasn't spelled right and then i was getting the matte version but then i was sent the glossy version so clearly there is something that has to change and um it could be a matter of perspective yes but there is something that you need to change within yourself so let's talk about your oracle cards in alignment with that story of this specific deck so it's it's very very apt <laughs> that i picked this deck for um for you today so so for your oracle cards you have your target and um both so clearly opposites right opposite energies because target you know it's something that you have control of your it, it talks about a very goal-oriented person someone who's just very sure of what they want and then you have your boat which talks of inheritance or windfall so it's something that just happens to you whether you like it or not whether you've prepared for it or not it's something that is just given while this is something that's taken and that is something that resonates with this grand cross provoker energy so the grand cross uh, the grand cross provoker in astrology um talks about um you, you know the, the grand cross where four planets are at 90 degrees of each other so basically they form a cross and then two planets being in opposition and when there is an opposition there is restriction you know conflict um opposing energies not necessarily a bad thing okay file number one it's not necessarily a bad thing but those are the instances where when you're pushed in a corner literally you need to you need to just figure it out, figure your shit out and change. Um, sometimes when we're in a situation and we still feel comfortable and we want something to happen, we sort of like push it our way because you're because you're very goal oriented. You know what you want. You you know how the outcome should be, and probably you figured out a thousand ways or probably a specific way on how it's supposed to be done, how it's supposed to be executed. But sometimes, and more actually, more often than not, life really isn't about planning. Life really isn't about that. So, for your oracle cards, I think that right now, one of you know your gut feeling, or at least. Um, whatever you feel you should do um, is change your perspective and your approach on a certain thing. Um, could be something that with space clearing here and let go, it could be something that you right now you're being driven by your past experiences. File number one. And while, you know, um, experience is the best teacher it doesn't necessarily have to be um looked at or taken in such a way where it restricts you from learning new things because you feel that whatever happened before whatever worked before will also work for the current situation so time is changing even with our jobs you know robotics are now a thing um things are supposed to be challenged um how they were done doesn't necessarily work in the current um, scheme of things, and that's something that's very evident in your reading. I think that pile, um, I think that pile number one, you're a very um practical person with Virgo being here. Virgo, Virgonians, they're very other than practical. They're very like um, they like schedules. They like things being in order. Um, they're sort of like more focused on. Uh, basically just tying up loose ends just making sure that everything is fine they're very constructive within themselves and within others they're very conscious self-conscious which is also the energy of the high priestess something that looks very much within although virgo probably can you know focus on like the physical the mental and everything your high priestess focus on your subconscious so when those two marry together what you have uh, what you have what you think what you do on your day-to-day -day, plus what your subconscious is telling you then that's when everything aligns that's when everything just literally falls together but with these cards here um there is something that you need to change with harmony being here um as i create i will um i will share harmony divine with love and care um i i think that your you're sort of like at the crossroad <laughs> literally like a crossroad where you don't know you have options you have options, you know you have options, um, your gut tells you that you have options on how you can resolve this issue, but something needs to change and something needs to be dropped. I think that you're, I, I think that you're weighing two options. I'm not really sure if this is a career or something. We will check later in the tarot, but there is something that you're supposed to let go and something that you're, you're supposed to adapt to 
basically um, pile number one with space clearing here with space clearing here and let go clearly just talks about a lot of baggage a lot of things which you don't want to admit to yourself a lot of things that are lingering at the back of your head you know with the butterflies being here in the pomegranates um are those pomegranates yeah looks like pomegranates um you know it's a blank slate for you with the book there being plain but also has a lot of butterflies so and butterflies they always talk about transformation so you're you're at this stage in your life where things may seem confusing things may seem as if everything is just you know competing with each other it could be competing priorities um you know probably what you want to be given at a certain point in time isn't really what's offered um so from how i'm seeing this it's more of like you are being required to change your your perspective on this current situation that you're inquiring about and your gut knows that your gut is telling you that you're hearing your you know you're hearing your inner self and your intuition telling you that um you need to adapt to this change and there is and that is the action that's required but let's see why you don't want to do it because with the moon here very lightly lit then clearly you my dear pile number one you don't want to listen so let's talk about um let's talk about that energy um let's try and see your tarot what exactly is going on so let's keep these here let's keep um i'll just put it here can you see that still there okay and probably here okay let's just you know what i'll just put these here just so we have guidance on your energy so not so easy hmm pile number one so look at your tarot and ask what could be this thing that you are being required change or what or what is it about what is your gut telling you to change perspective on and what are you supposed to do about it okay so i think that you already know maybe this will serve as clarification so um spirit uh What is being required? File number one to change. You have the ace, eight of wands in reverse. What is being required? We change the hermit. So talk about being very self-focused and being overly, I guess such an overthinker, such a perfectionist. You have here the chariot upright. You have the Nine of Wands in reverse. And you have the King of Coins. You have Justice card. Let's move it here. Have Justice card. You have the Two of Wands. Let's put this. Five of Cups. Um, hmm. The nine of wands, clarified by the three of coins, and the four of cups. Too much self focused energy. Three of wands. Okay. Um, let's look at this. All right. So, pile number one. Um,. Let's talk about this energy first. So you have here the Ace of Wands and the Hermit upright. So clearly the delay of what you're trying to achieve is um is your lack of being is your lack of 
decision making. It's basically your indecision. With um, the Eight of Wands being here and the Justice card being in reverse, you're taking too much time. Pile number, um, pile number one in making your decision to move forward with the Chariot being here. Now, I did mention earlier that um, you're this type of person who's you know you're you're, you're focused on yourself, yes, but. Um, you're not you have sort of like a lot of baggage a lot of things to think about um, your experiences you base everything on them and while it's good there has to be some appreciation that things change and you need to adapt so with the two of ones being here you're not able to move forward you're not able to move forward you're not able to move forward you're not able to make a decision Sorry, uh, my camera stopped. So um, you're not able to move forward. You're not able to make a decision. Even if you're very goal-oriented, you're sort of like relying on what you already know with the windfall being here. Um, I think it's a very good thing for you to, you know, um, leave some for the universe to help you. But remember, pile number one, Everything that happens is a choice that we make and whether we like it or not and even the mistakes that we've made They are meant to happen because they are meant to teach us something nothing ever happens um, Nothing ever happens by accident and with the two of ones being here in reverse and the justice card here um being in reverse as well with the eight of wands being here and the only thing being upright on this portion of your energy is the hermit card this clearly just says that you, your lack of decision your indecision your your you know your ability to not um you know pick it up quickly because you're too probably too afraid probably you know um probably you feel that you're just alone in this and you cannot accept that fact well pile number one sorry to burst your bubble but sometimes you really have to go through things alone and with the two of ones being here in reverse you're losing precious time and you're not able to notice the good things or how much progress you've made um in this journey of i i, I think you're could be something that you're moving, you're planning to move, you're planning to um, probably start a business, but but I guess you're not able to move forward and get this energy, this success um, right now because you're too scared to move forward. You feel like you're walking on eggshells, you don't see your progress, you're focusing so much on, on what doesn't work, but um, this is start, something that's starting for you. And as you know, when, when things are starting, pile number one, when things are starting, um, they're never, not, I mean, they're never usually smooth. It's very, very rare that when, let's say, you start a business, you start to try to get to school, you start to, you know, you're, you start your first job. It's never really very, um, it's never really very straightforward. It's never really very like, oh, it's just, you know, butterflies and flowers and stuff. You have to not just work your ass off, but you also have to stand up every time that life locks you, uh, that life knocks you down. But with the five of um, cups being your mermaids, they're supposed to be very, like, ethereal people, people of the ocean. They're supposed to be very majestic. But here... They look distorted and sad, and you don't even know why. Why? Why be sad when you're this very nice, majestic creature, um, who other people, you know, even dream about? With the Five of Cups being here, you can see how. You can see how she's just. She just doesn't pay mind. Doesn't pay mind to the change of the season, and I just have to mention this because I'm seeing like autumn leaves, um, the. Grand Cross Provoker card, um, it can be related with, you know, the four seasons um, of the uh, equinox. So basically, um, it's just clearly saying that life is just really a cycle. You know, you just need to, whatever is lost will be replenished in one way or another. And whatever, whatever lives will eventually move on and, you know, and pass on so i think that for this one um this specific mermaid um she's feeling sad because you know the seasons are changing even if she's part of this change even if she's part of this of this whole picture here she doesn't she doesn't notice it 
because she's just focused on I don't even think that she's focused on the cops and that could be your issue too you could be you could be focused on so many things pile number one you could be focused on so many things and since not all of them are happening in the way that you want them to happen even those things that are doing well two things that are doing well out of out of you know um out of the three things that you're focusing on doesn't really make you happy so instead instead you're losing some perfect time i'm actually having a hard time reading your cards pile number one and normally this deck this deck is very easy for me to read so i want to know what this ah okay so someone abandoned you because i was gonna ask i want to know what this nine of wands is and then this showed up so clearly pile number one someone broke your trust not necessarily broke your heart not necessarily broke your love but i think that this lack of you know th this energy of indecision that you have right now you're being stuck in pursuing your dreams because you're afraid of doing it alone i know i did say that earlier that you have a very like not really messy but very like indecisive energy because you're afraid of doing things by yourself well um pile number one whatever it is that you've spent so much effort on before and honestly i think that before you focused on yourself there was someone or something that you tried to that you tried to make make do with you tried to make it work it could be like a previous business could be a previous job could be but for some of you at least for a majority of you it this this looks to be like a, a business partner of some sort someone who's supposed to help you achieve your dreams but what happened was instead of instead of um working with you on it they sort of like left you out in the open they took all of the credit and just left you um i am having a i'm i'm i'm, I'm having a strong feeling of um let's say um, and this is just the only example that I can think of. It's ringing in my head. Let's say um, you're in another country with your partner and then the best way for you guys to earn money would be to go back into school and probably take classes and, um, I don't know, get licensure of some sort. And since one of you has to work while the other one studies, you file number one um decided to be the one to work you sort of like gave way and gave this person your partner whoever it is could be a partner could be a sister could be a brother but someone that you're with um you gave them the chance to start ahead so let's just say that you did the working you did the paying of the bills and then whatever they were earning they went to school so when they finished they, you were thinking that this person who you helped will help you carry your weight but other than they took the lead they left you you were supposed to take turns with this that's why the autumn was very very was sticking to me earlier because you know after autumn then there's another season but instead of instead of that season being given its time the season of that person who you tried to help that person just suddenly disappeared and let you out in the cold let you defend for yourself after you know they've probably had their career they've you know they've probably just finished school or they already got the money that's needed to start the business they left you they left you and all you could ever think about and all you can ever hold on is your dream and that form of betrayal where the four seasons you were dropped you were supposed to sorry you were supposed to focus you were supposed to you know um be the focus for this season 
but this person just suddenly decided to no i don't want i don't want to help you i have other things to think about this is a very sad energy uh, number one and i'm sorry for I'm sorry for your loss, but maybe that's why this card is for you. Because like I said earlier, um, I got this deck. I was very, very frustrated at start because it, it's not really cheap. And then I got the incorrect one. I got the incorrect version of the deck. And then I got the version with which has a wrong spelling. So it was very frustrating. Um, and... Lo and behold, when I contacted the seller, she she became actually my friend, and I used to like, and and until now I still get um tarot cards from her. But that incident, which is why I, now I know why I kept on saying that this gut feeling that you have is something that's requiring you to just really change perspective, because if I took that incident, and this is just really really the perfect example for this, if I took that incident where I got an incorrect card, I paid so much for it, and it's it's wrong in so many ways, I would. I would just be stuck at being frustrated and I would have hated that seller, you know, would have hated that seller. Um, but instead she became my friend and, you know, um, I get to, I get to do some business with her. Um, I get to talk to her. She's, you know, she's, she's somehow giving me certain advices without her probably knowing. And I wouldn't have gotten to that, to, to that way of thinking if I was stuck at the fact that I got the wrong cards and if I didn't change my per perspective, that, you know what, maybe she didn't know anything about it. Maybe it was just shipped immediately and then she didn't get the chance to check. Maybe someone shipped it for her and stuff like that. So right now, pile number one, your gut is really telling you that there is success to be had in this situation. It you could be out of season, yes. The, anything could have been delayed. You could have been delayed by, let's say, I don't know, like two three seasons of the year so probably like three quarters um but that doesn't stop you from being able to still continue being a majestic being that you are and with the king of coins being here holding holding this um coin with one hand and the other one just and the other hand just really holding the chair as if he's holding on for dear life, then maybe um no it's not a maybe then the thing that you need to do is just to let go of the fear of falling off your chair because it's a very stable chair anyway. It's a very stable chair. It's not gonna crack if you, it's not gonna crack if you move. So just you know, put all the effort, gather your strength, and go after your dreams. Solidify your dreams, even if you have to do it yourself. With the three of wands being here, the three of wands is always an energy of moving forward. It's always an energy of journey. And and if you can see here, your two of wands is stuck because of your lack of decision. You're too focused on whatever went wrong. You're too focused on being alone. You're afraid of the dark. You don't know what to do. You're just you're just stuck because you feel like you can't move. Because you might make the same mistake. But with the Three of Wands being your underlying energy, then it's clearly just saying, you know what? Stop this. S stop this. Focus on this. And move forward. There is always something that can change the moment that we, we switch our direction. And with the Grand Cross being here, um, with the Grand Cross card being here, you know, Sometimes things, they don't work, not because life just really wants to throw rocks at us, but because there is something that we need to learn. We are being pushed into the wall so that we will learn to be resilient. We will learn to adapt. Because if, because if you know, you're given the same, you're given the same, um, oh, and I just noticed, there's fire behind this chariot. And it's as if, you know, these two things, the good and the bad, the good and the bad are taking him to safety, taking this person to safety, out of the fire. So clearly it's just saying here, and this is a very strong energy for, and this is a very strong message for you by number one. I know that the reading is somewhat messy, and probably that is your energy, but Regardless of whatever mess, and even if you feel that you were burned, even if you feel that you were left out, even if you feel that your dreams were, you know, were, were burned into ashes or whatsoever, how, 
whatever you want to describe it. There is always a chance for you to move away from that and move to a different place. If only you focus on yourself. Because sometimes, and, and um, funny because I, I was just reading this in the Bible yesterday from Proverbs. Um, yeah, from Proverbs. And there was a mention there about focusing on yourself and just, you know, um, excluding yourself from any guarantee, from any debt that your friend can have or your friend will take. So just beg off of it, you know, um, lower your pride and just beg off of that debt. And don't guarantee for anyone. And that clearly is a message for this one. You may have made it already. You may have made that mistake, which is why you feel that you've fought for it so long, but you were left out in the dark. Um, There was supposed to be, you know, there was supposed to be um, communication. There was supposed to be assistance. There was supposed to be collaboration on this, but that didn't happen. And sometimes you just really have to suck it up because it happened already. Things may not fall in the same order that they are expected to be. To, to go um, or that they are expected to happen, but they're going to happen either way. Your four cups are still here. It's just floating there in the air. Remember, mermaids are in the water, so you never really lose this. It's It may, you know, like move and shit, but you never really lose it. It's not like it's going to disappear out of your sight. If only you look back at it and put it back and just place it where it's supposed to be, then it's going to be fine. So, um, let's ask for some advice or no, because I think that we already know the advice that you need to change your perspective. Let's ask what's going to happen if you listen. So, um, spirit, what's going to happen? What will be, what is meant for pile number one, if they listen to change your perspective and just really grab, grab and hold on to their dreams again, what is going to happen? What's waiting for them? You have here the seven of swords up, right? So you realizing that you're just really, you know, you're just really go, you cannot circumvent, you cannot circumvent things. King of Wands in reverse. What is going to happen? What is going to happen? You have here the Wheel of Fortune, the Emperor. And the four of swords see your heartbreak will be your salvation pile number one back of the deck nine of coins in reverse perfect so what's waiting for you if you listen to change your perspective and grab on and hold on to your dreams again so this person who has left you in the dark who has betrayed you who has who went behind your back while everything was just really um and and really left you in a dark place this person will realize this person will realize that and i think that the same fire that burned you when they left all of a sudden will be the same fire that will burn them now. The universe is all about karma. It's a karmic cycle. Whether you put positive or negative energy out there, it always bounces back. And clearly this one falling here, there is a lot of fire here, a lot of burning. And yes, agreed. You were burned. Your dreams were shattered. You weren't taken into consideration. You were literally left out. But that same issue, that same delay, that same problem that you've had before, it will be imposed on them. It will be imposed on on them by someone else as well. So it's as if the universe is like literally taking your revenge for you now. Let's let's just leave him at that. Let's just leave his energy at that. Let's focus on what's good for you. With the Wheel of Fortune falling here on top of the Three of Swords, and clearly, what else can you say about the Three of Fortune? About the Wheel of Fortune? I don't know why I said Three of Fortune. Um, And I did say earlier that there are three things, and two out of the three things are already going well. So I think that now, since I am just correlating it, um, 
these three things that you're trying to accomplish, you could be working and then doing business and then doing something else or probably studying. All those three things will work together. That doesn't have to resonate with you if it, if, if, if it doesn't. After all, this is a general reading, for, but for a majority of you, there are three things that will align in your life if you change perspective and if you really just go for what you want. Now, with the Wheel of Fortune being here, um, from how I'm seeing this, I see here Taurus. And which one is that? Um, but the Wheel of Fortune is always a positive card, bringing luck, bringing an end of a cycle, being, you know, um, just really like just a wheel when you were, when one, one moment you're down and the next moment you're already up there. So that's what's waiting for you with the Emperor card being here. Um, again, Emperor Aris, uh, Emperor Aries, um, Mars energy, fire energy, you'll find back the passion to drive, to drive this dream again into fruition. And with the Four of Swords being here, um, although there are swords here, I think this person is just really sleeping. It's as if it looks to me like sleeping beauty, you know. You have candles and roses there, and it just gives you it just gives you rest. It's not like you were killed. So I think that um you could have been paying out loans, you could have been paying out some guarantee which you made for this person, and then they left you to fend for yourself and deal with all of the aftermath by yourself, which is probably why you're confused, probably why I feel very heavy with your reading. I'm very confused. I misspeak words, which is not very usual for me. So I think that, um, I think by October, so that's going to be next month, either next month or within the next 10 months. Because I did say earlier three seasons, right? So it could be nine, 10 months. Yeah. So within that, time frame and i want you to comment below if it does happen within that time frame you'll probably remember this reading when everything will fall into place you will find another thing to do you will someone else will help you um could be a very paternal figure some investor of some sort um someone who's older will be able to help you pick yourself up and that's when you know that's when you literally be at peace um, with whatever has happened, that's when you will learn to forgive and just really, you know, um, put put it to bed, put it to rest, whatever has happened before. But in any case, pile number one, just change your perspective on this. Forget what has happened. Um, stop this lack of decision. Stop being very indecisive on how you want to move forward. Even if you have to move forward at it alone, which is what is being said here, then just go do it. Don't be afraid of falling off your chair because that chair is made for you. You're meant to sit there. You're meant to rest there. Hold hold your dreams. Hold whatever it is. Hold whatever plans you have with both your hands and just move forward. Just move forward, pile number one, and you will be rewarded in ways that you cannot fathom. So... That's it for your reading, pal number one. Thank you so much for staying with me. If you did like this video, please feel free to give me a thumbs up. Comment down below if this was very helpful for you. If there was in any way, if it resonates with you in any way, I would love to hear your thoughts. And do follow me on Instagram and Facebook, Psycho Liberty, and since I post random message readings over there. Um, so yeah, again, thank you so much, pal one, and I will see you on your next reading. Bye. Hey there, pal number two. Thank you so much for being here. So if you chose um, our Wizards Tarot, then this is going to be your reading on what your gut is telling you. What's that deafening message? What are you supposed to do about it? So I have here a pre shuffled oracle cards just to check um, the energy um, of your situation, whatever issue you may have. If you're not able to resonate with this one, then please feel free to check the other pals. Absolutely okay to be drawn to more than one pal. Similarly, if you're not able to resonate with any of the energies on all three pals, then most likely there isn't any message for you on this video. So um, you have here club. Someone will try to make you do something against your will. You have your ram, a stubborn, aggressive person. Hmm. Well, that can't get more cohesive than that. You have your Leo. You have your trust. I am safe, I am secure, in love I trust, my faith endures. Hmm. 
Hmm. Prosperity, freedom. Ah, okay, now I get it. Too many secrets. Aries, I am. And stillness, lack of movement. Okay. So pile number two. Okay, so pile number two, I think that you, this could most likely be your love reading, okay? I think pile number two, you are basically with someone who just literally drags you down. Sorry, I mean, I didn't want to bring it that way, but that's just really, I mean, sorry, I mean... That's just really, I mean, how else to say it? So, um, let's talk about your Oracle cards first. You know what? Actually, let's talk about your High Priestess card first. So, as you can see on your High Priestess card um, right here, and I felt this the moment that I drew this earlier, there is a lot of secrets a lot of hidden things that you probably don't want to talk about with this person i'm not saying that they're a bad person it's, it's that there are a lot of not so nice things which you are trying not to talk about with this person could be some secrets that you could have about them could be you know some um discussions that you're supposed to um that you're supposed to have which you don't want to initiate um because you're a nice person but I think you're missing the part here that eventually this dark part of your relationship will catch up with you, whether you talk to it, to the person or not. So talking about your oracles, with stillness being here um, and Leo, I think that the both of you are very opposite people. I think that this person that you're with is very chill while you're this type of, you know, go-getter, very fiery, something that's stuck in the winter while someone that's really burning with desire. It's more of like summer versus winter, total opposites. Um, and with I am being here, I think that you're trying to influence these people to just really, you know, th this people, I mean, th this person to just really focus on their energy, hone whatever talent they have, and just really um, be able to proceed forward and go for what they want. I think that in your relationship, you're this person who, who sort of like is the more mature one. Um, who sort of like just um probably guides this person, this other person. But um, I think that right now the energy with a stubborn, aggressive person and someone who tried to make you do something against your will, I think that your energies are very, very opposite in the way that um, with the ram being here <laughs> and Aries being here. So, I mean, duh, they even look the same. Um, I think that you are approaching this person in a very very aggressive way to the point that they feel that they don't have the freedom the freedom to go through things at their own pace they feel like you're forcing them you're this someone who's forcing them to do something against their will um i know that you're very passionate with leo here you have a fire sign and you have another fire sign um why i think um the reason why you're like that is because whatever worked for you before is something that has worked for you for years and you could be someone who's you know people managing you could be someone who's very very secure with your career already or your business you're someone Someone who knows that you're someone who basically trusts your gut enough to know that this that whatever you're trying to teach this person is um something that will give them you know something that will be of benefit to them while that can be true well, number two remember that each person has to go through their own pace through their own cycle through their own journey at the pace that is comfortable for them otherwise it will backfire when we say comfortable for them it's whatever the universe has set for them you and this person has a different journey you both have different timelines and it could be that right now they're stuck in this winter they're very chill they're trying to figure out they're still trying to figure out 
what they want to do with their lives. And while you, you're this sun energy, which has just, you know, like figured out everything. You could be older than this person. This could be someone who's very immature, someone who's young, doesn't have to be, um, maturity doesn't have, doesn't really have to be measured by age. But, um, Right now, pile number two, what your gut is telling you is that I think you know that you're being a little too aggressive um, with this other person that you're with. I think you know that you're being, um, if you are a girl, then probably you sound more like their mother instead of their partner. I mean, some, I mean women, come on, aren't we guilty of that sometimes? But um, I think there has to be some appreciation here that that you can't always you can't always shove you know you can't always shove expectations down a person's throat if they can't swallow it at that moment maybe you know maybe at that point they have competing priorities maybe at that point they're still young they're still trying to figure shit out maybe at that point you know they're also scared because of their past experiences and you can't really impose someone you can't really impose what you want on someone else the only thing that you can influence is yourself. And if you want to apply that same pressure to someone else, then you don't really know their threshold, pile number one, pile number two. And I, I think that right now you're being not really um unfair is not the word. I think the word um that I'm looking for is not really obnoxious, but um I think you're being a little too proud of your accomplishments pile number two while you are successful and while while you know that this would work you have to let them follow your lead at a certain pace that they can keep up with because if you're too fast then there's no point there's no point of you know there there's no point of trying to influence a person who can't keep up with you because eventually they will snap and you will realize that maybe just maybe you were a little mean to them and and i have this ringing in my head right now um this scene in princess diaries where um the, the driver um sort of like told the queen um because the queen said that's not how a princess is supposed to act and then and then and then the driver said um, yes, understood, but um, I'm just saying that, yes, as a prince, uh, as a queen, you know, you're supposed to tell her that, but you could have been a little too harsh on your granddaughter. So while the queen wants Mia Thermopolis to just really be this regal creature or this regal being that she's supposed to be, She's just not ready at that time. I mean, she just found out she's a princess like what weeks ago, and then you want her to act as if she she's already known everything, and she's very young. She's just getting through school, and everything. So, so that's a perfect example for your energy. Um, pile number two, and I didn't expect it to be a love reading, but I think that this, you know, you being pushy, you being a little know it all. Well, well, well. Okay, okay. Well, we appreciate the fact that you do know what you're talking about. You do know how to get results. You are a born leader. You are a born go getter. Doesn't mean that everyone is, and I think you know that. And I think that your relationship is breaking apart right now, or at least having trouble. Because you're forcing it and you know it, but you don't want to stop it because that's already in your DNA. So we're going to look at the tarot right now and um, validate if that is um, indeed the energy or if, you know, if this is indeed a love reading. Let's put this both here, there. But... You know what? Most likely it is. Um, I think we'll look. Oh, that, wow, sorry. We'll look at um, some advice. We'll look at what's waiting for you if you do change this approach um, with this person. So, um, I think you already know the answer. Um, pile number two is just you know could be this could be a little extra confirmation so um spirit what really is this situation talking about for pile number two what is their gut really telling them what issue what situation 
you have here the Queen of Swords in reverse. Okay, so being a little too pushy, a little inconsiderate, if I may say, a little too know-it-all. You have the Six of Cups in reverse. <laughs> so it's as if you're... Yeah, you're guiding someone, but you're not guiding them in the right way. You can see here on the Six of Cups, the image is like a student, right? So yeah, you are teaching someone something. But the question is, are you teaching them in the right way? You have your Death card in reverse. So see, Death card normally is just one person or one scholar or something. It's normally just an image of one thing. And for this death card, it's two people. Two people with a person, with a man, whoever has the masculine energy in your relationship, burning themselves just to keep you warm. And that's not sustainable. That's never sustainable. That's never sustainable, pile number two. So yep. This is indeed a love reading. You have here the Hierophant. So again, lessons that you're trying to teach. And you have here Justice card. Okay. So let's talk about this one first before I clarify because this is clear as day. Your energy is clear as day. With the Death card being here, then this is something that you already know you're overdoing. But you don't want to let it go. And indeed, yes, this is a relationship reading. This is a partnership reading. Um, it doesn't have to be relationship like love, love. It could be like business partnership. But for a majority of you, this this is um this is a love reading. If it's not, then that's fine. But this is in this is a reading involved with you and someone else. So with your energy here be um with the Queen of Swords in reverse and the Six of Cups, yes, you are someone who knows things, someone who has been through things, someone who walks the talk someone who really knows how to how how to navigate things because you yourself have been in that situation but with the six of cups being here in reverse i think that well the six of cups talks about you know nostalgic um it, it's a nostalgic energy it's an energy of it's an energy of um of tracing back your steps and using that to move forward you can't um with this one being in reverse i i think that i think that you're forcing the maturity into someone as you can see on this image the cup that you're giving to this person is too big for them it's too big for them it fits perfectly in your hands but it's too big for this other person so if you want them to carry that, if you want them to always hold it, it's always going to be a lit it's going to be bigger than what they can hold, even with both hands. And eventually, if you know, if if their hands stiffen or they grow tired, they they'll just let it go. Similar with this one. You don't have wings, they have wings. You're two different people. But because you want the both of you to just really be the same. Then they're burning their, their wings for you. They're burning it so that they lose it so that you're, 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 you're the same. But the death card talks about changes. And this is a change that you know, which you have to do. This is a change which you have to do within yourself, your perspective, the way you do things. You already know it, but you don't want to do it. I don't know why you're forcing things to be similar and equated. You know, there is a difference. Between, I remember this um, during economics class, there is a difference between equality and, um, and equity. Oh, is it equity? Equality and... Equality and... Mm, yeah, equality and equity. So um, you could be two different things. You could be two different people. But, you know, if, if you're both at the same pace... If you're both, if your energies intertwine with each other, then it's it's going to be something that's very wonderful, something that's going to be magical, something that's going to be something that's just something that's just really going to be easy and free flowing. You can't force someone to be like you the same way that you can't force yourself to be like someone else. Pile number two. And maybe that is a lesson that you, as a teacher, 
have to learn. Sometimes, sometimes, have you heard that saying that it's very difficult to raise parents? This is like that syndrome where, yes, you are the teacher. Yes, you have two students. But sometimes, maybe, you're not really sure what you're talking about. That sometimes you maybe just maybe you have to you have to go at it at your student space for for lack of reference student because as you can see here these two people they're very young and these things that are on the board that this teacher is teaching them not really something a normal student can make out of I mean my graduated college and stuff but I. I mean, I can understand a few, but not everything. Because, I, I mean, because let's just admit that not everyone is as smart as this teacher. Not everyone is as smart as you. Not everyone can do things the way that you do. And that's something that you have to accept. Because with the justice card being here, the justice talks about fairness, talks about equality, talks about things being looked at both perspectives with no bias. But the fact that this is in reverse, then clearly you are misjudging this whole situation. You could be biased, focusing on your pace, on what you want, on what you want to happen, on how you want to influence this person because you think that that's the best for them. But you know that, you know within your gut that it's not how you're supposed to do it. <laughs> File number two. So, um, so let's let's just ask spirit. Um, if you let this person, if you guide this person, eh, at the, um in the way that you know how, but at the pace that they would be able to cope up with, what's gonna happen? So spirit, if file number two lets this person be. Guides them continuously, but at the person's pace. What's going to happen? What's going to happen, spirit? You have here the hermit card in reverse. You have here the ace of swords in reverse. So with these two cards, right off the bat, this person will be more, this, this person will gain more courage to figure out how they want to do things, what they want, what's their truth. They will be the one to approach this in a way that they would know how and what's best for themselves. You have here the Page of Pentacles in reverse. What's going to happen if they let this person be? You have here the Moon in reverse, so still a lot to learn. And you have here Judgment. The fact that just, justice and judgment are falling... Um, within each other looks like coffins huh looks like coffins truth with the owl being there it's the back of your deck seven of pentacles um okay so what's gonna happen if you let this person Deal with shit at their own pace. With the Hermit card being here, I think that this person will start to realize that you know they, you know, they will make use of what they have. They will make use of what they have. Pile number two, and you'll be surprised at the truth that they can share with you. Maybe you'll learn something from your student if you let them be. They will go out of their shell. They will try to figure things out by themselves. They will basically start to grow. They will basically start to go after whatever it is that you both desire. Remember, they have your they have your red. They have their green, and they have their white. Things that talk about love. Red is for love. Green is the heart chakra. White is about purity of intentions. So I think that this person and the fact that these are all in reverse, these are things that are yet to happen if, and only if, you let this person deal with, deal with things in the way that um, they want to deal with. They want to deal with the situation. So with the moon card being here, I think that this person will realize that there is indeed a lot to learn, yes, but they can learn it in other ways. The towers here, they're very stable. Um, 
the towers here they're very stable and there's really nothing to be scared of because i think that this person right now feels very very scared they feel that they are already losing your favor um and that adds that that gives an additional stress okay in this whole situation now with the judge, judgment card being here i think that that's their fear their fear is losing you their fear is like this relationship dying so from a love reading that's that's a good thing because you know that they value you but if you're going to put yourself in the shoes of this person is it a good feeling that you're always afraid that you don't have the stability and security within your relationship because you're different because you can't give your partner whatever exact thing it is that they want from you so I think pile number two, whatever it is that you feel in your gut, if you're not at peace with whatever it is that you're doing, um, it's actually something that someone told me years back. You would know that you're making the right choices if your heart is at peace. And right now, I don't think that you are at peace. If you are not at peace, um, if your gut is really telling you, if there is this deafening voice saying that, you know what, you have to let them be, you have to chill, you have to just let this person be, you can guide them, but you don't have to make them burn what they are and lose what they have just to just to be like you or just to, just to, just to, you know, um, just to reach that level that you've already reached because you know maybe they're just really not there and if you do love this person you will let them you will let them keep their wings you will continue to dance with them you will continue to guide them because you know waltz it's a dance where you have you both have to be fluid otherwise you'll look like crap or you'll dance like crap or probably you'll step on each other's foot but dance with this person dance with this person without asking them to burn their wings for you even if you don't have wings, maybe you're not supposed to have wings and they're supposed to have wings. Otherwise, if you both have wings, then, you know, you can't dance because your wings will be all over the place and it'll, it'll just bump with each other. But right now, you just have to let things be. You have to, you have to be able to let go of this notion that you need to control everything because not everyone needs to burn for you. Um pile number two and that's that's a very very clear message here you have to change how you approach or how you want to influence other people because it's really not the same for everybody so that's it pile number two thank you so much for staying with me if you did like this video please feel free to give me a thumbs up comment down below if this was able to resonate with you if this has struck your heart in more ways than one and do follow me on facebook and instagram psychic liberty and simple random readings over there and yeah i will see you on your next reading pile number two bye Hey there, pile number three. Thank you so much for being here. So if you chose um, our true black tarot, then this is going to be a reading on, you know, what your gut is telling you. What's that deafening voice that you need to act on? What are you supposed to do? So um, per usual, I have your pre-shuffled oracle cards just to check um, the energy of your situation. If you can resonate with this one, then please feel free to check the other piles. If you're not able to resonate with any of the piles, then most likely there isn't any message for you on this reading. But similarly, if you're able to resonate with more than just one pile, it's absolutely okay. So um you have three of these tea leaves you have start news of a birth or a new business opportunity and then you have here spear heartache over what you no longer have hmm. and you have weeping willow family sorrow Okay, so this is like a very specific energy, um, pile um, number three. So if there are some of you who are watching this video who probably lost, you know, someone who lost a baby, who had a miscarriage, um, I'm sending you love and know that the universe is with you. Um, the universe takes away when they have something better to give. So I just want to get that out there. Um, so last quarter moon. Hmm. success that success that's true belongs to me success with honor integrity so number three so that's again healing falling right here so there could be some of you who lost something who lost somebody um I will get to some points later, but yeah, this is coming together. Um, trust. 
So again, you have there the dove. So this could be about loss. And you have your 12th house escape. And again, you have two of these. So let's just move this. You have here manifestation, what you desire is on its way. And nature, notice the harmony around you. Okay. So you have a lot of moon, you have a lot of emotions in your reading, you have a lot of healing, you have you have a lot of pain, a lot of loss. Okay. So funny, um, pile number three, because this deck, what's with the, you know what, the decks today are very, very personal. Um, this deck, actually, I very rarely use on videos. And in fact, when there are people who request private readings for me, I think I've only used this twice. Um, um, twice and just on my brother whenever he asks me for a reading. But for this specific um, High Priestess, you can see there that glimmer of a map um, here. That is actually the Marianas Trench. And the Marianas Trench is the deepest point, right? It's underneath the ocean. And um, very apt for your reading because um, there where light does not touch, where pressure is very strong, the living conditions are very, very difficult. That's where majestic creatures or not so usual creatures are seen. You can see their one celled organism that lives. You can see their crustaceans, which are so big, they're not the usual size, size of a normal, let's say, crab. So my point is, um, right now you could be in a situation which really fair, which really isn't favorable for you. You could be stuck in a rut. I just said one-celled organism. There could be a lot of healing. There could be a lot of self-doubt. There could be a lot of you feeling isolated. Um, there could be a lot of hoping, um, hoping still. Um, so there could be... Um, there's just really a lot of pain and really a lot of emotions here. Um, I know I did say earlier there could be some of you who lost a family member, who lost a child, who had a miscarriage, and I'm really, really sorry. But whatever the loss may be, um, pile number three, even if you feel that you're put in situations that challenge your own um, your own sense of self-respect and self-preservation and self-sustainability, um, Know that those things that happen, they are meant to make you stronger, as cliche as it may sound. And and um, and I know I read earlier in a book that the challenges that we experience in life, they're... I feel very sad for you, but there, but there's really no other word to say other than this pain that you're feeling and this sorrow that you have with people who are very close to you. They're really just, you know, give yourself a big hug and you're meant to rise above all of this. So I think what your gut, what, what your gut wants to tell you, what your intuition wants to tell you is that you're not alone in this. You may feel that you are and you may feel that everything is going, you know, um, going against you. You may feel that you're isolated in such a place where it's very dark and very plain and not so very happy. Um, but with the last quarter moon here, the last quarter talks about, you know, releasing what's blocking you. And, and I think that the message for... For you, for this one, especially with the last quarter moon and the twelfth house being here, both of these talk about you know you being in a period. Um, basically, just talks about crisis, which you just really need to let go of. The twelfth house talks about you being in a uh, you being at the point. After all, this is the house of Pisces, so you sort of like 
trying to figure out what you do right, what you do wrong. You're probably in that state where you're questioning yourself if, if you know, you're, you're self-doubting. But whatever has happened, you have to let it go. Any energy that does not serve you, you have to let it go. And I think that this is something that you have been hearing um, for such a long time within yourself, something that your gut is telling you that, you know what, there's really nothing much you can do. And as painful as it may sound, you know, you lose things because it gives birth to something else. Um, for some reason, I, I'm thinking of this, like this fossil, I forgot what it was, it was called ammonite? I, I forgot. But um, from how I'm seeing this, it's just really talking about the passage of time. Whatever has started before, has you know um life is just really a cycle and it may take longer for you than the usual but eventually you will get there um th th this really just talks about loss over family i'm not sure if it's loss of a child loss of uh, um loss of someone that's really close to you and you may feel um you may feel alone but their spirit is with you you may feel that you're drowning but you're rising on top of it but you need to hold yourself together um, you need to hold yourself together. Um, pile number three, you need to brace yourself for these things that are happening. Life is a constant, you know, life is a, con a constant combination, a constant change of good and bad things that happen in our lives. And all of those things, the good, the bad, the not so good, the not so bad, everything in between, they're meant to teach you something. They're meant to make you um, adaptable or agile to the ever-changing world. So let's put this aside and um just really you know just really look at your energy let's ask your tarot so probably um wow okay um so for this one let's ask um some clarity on what your gut is telling you about this loss that you have. And then let's probably ask, how will it be replaced? Anything that's lost will be replaced by something. Has to be. That's really just the law of the universe. So we'll ask those two things. Um, but for now, let's ask your spirit first. What is this gut feeling? Um, what's this nagging gut feeling? So spirit, can you clarify what pile number three Scott is telling them about this loss? What did it ha what and why did it happen? You have here the world card, see? So you're being set for something better. Um pile number three. You have here the five of swords and the knight of wands in reverse. You have here the Ace of Cups. And what is this? Ah, the Eight of Wands in reverse. Okay. So, um, pile number three. You're being set for something, for something better in life. While you feel that things aren't really going the way that you should, that it should go, while you feel that things are, you know, just against you, everything is just messy, everything is just not going the way that it should be. Know that at the end of this journey, there is something that's waiting for you. You have here another dove. So whoever it is that you lost is guiding you. Um, I think that for a majority of you, after all, this is really just a general reading, but this is about losses in some physical losses, in death loss where the spirits of those who have gone beyond are still with us. Whether you feel that this isn't, um, you know, this has caused a delay in your life, um, whether you feel or you accept that um, this really just puts a stop on some things that you need to do, could be that you're supposed to travel, you're supposed to go elsewhere, and then this this tragedy has... Um, has just really put a stop on your situation. This is a very specific reading, and I'm very, very sorry if I have to bring this. Um, if you can't resonate with this one, then most likely this is in your pile. This is probably for a specific 
people who has for specific people who's lost somebody um know that they are with you and that they are helping you to rise up at this you have here an arrow that's really just pushing up and you have here the world card so clearly whatever it is that you lost even if you lost it it's meant to give you something else that will be more fulfilling and in fact this thing or this person this is i actually think this is a person this person that you lost is guiding you is guiding you into how you're supposed to move forward it's not going to be easy because we don't speak you know um we don't speak with the dead directly but they are with us energies they don't really disappear from this world when they move on they stay so find solace and find peace in the fact that um that it could be slow it could be frustrating but it is how it's meant to happen so um let's let's further ask um spirit um what else is coming for you so you have here the hermit card in reverse falling underneath the world card what is for you now i'll see you have here the death card The death card falling right underneath the five of swords. You may feel that this person has betrayed you by leaving you, but it is something that they really that the, that their journey has just really ended. Um, I'm sorry, pile number three. See, you have your anant, which is the birth card. In death, there is life. So something is coming for you. for those, and this is a child. So for those who has lost a baby, for those who had miscarriage, know that there is something that is for you. You may not appreciate the way the way that it's making you wait, but there is something for you. If you are expecting, then this could be a sign that um, let this be confirmation that you could have another baby but it's yet to manifest the knight of wands is an energy um you know what give me a second let me just check that um yeah that is the knight of wands one moment um uh-huh yeah so um so the knight of wands is an energy it's about restlessness and about, it's about being impatient and the Anand card is about birth. So whether you so this, I have to say this, and I'm very, very sorry if it will not sound right for those who have lost their child who's had miscarriage. Now is the time for you to apply and make um, and be conscious of the law of repulsion. When you see the law of repulsion, the more that you want something, the more that you you force it to happen at the time that you want it to happen, the more that it doesn't happen. File number three. So I think that right now you need to you need to allow the universe to give it to you at its perfect time. I mean, even if I don't explain this death and then life, it's a cycle. Whatever you lost will be replaced. Even if it's not a person, whatever you lost will be replaced. Um in the same manner. In the same manner, if you lost a business, it will be replaced by another business that you would have to tend and work on. If it's a person, then, you know, whatever guidance they were able to give you will be given to you again by someone else. If you lost a child, if you had a miscarriage, then you will have another baby. But all of these, all of these, this loss has happened because it needed to put you where you need to be. You needed to realize these conflicts and you don't need to see this as a conflict actually you don't need to see this as a universe hurting you or as the universe wanting to get back at you you need to see this as the universe trying to get you to go out of your shell and realize that there is a lot of things that you, there are a lot of things that you need to do and a lot of things that you need to sorry a, a lot of things that you need to work on for you to be able to move forward you have here the six of pentacles so whatever you give is given back Whatever you give is given back. Um, pile number three. It there is no consolation for loss. Um, there there isn't anything that I or anyone can say that will make you feel better. But I hope that knowing that there is something good that's waiting for you will provide you a certain level of comfort. And then you have here the four of cups in reverse. So things 
So things just, you know, just things just starting to sprout again. The Four of Cups energy, it's normally, you know, when it's upright, it's an energy of delay, it's an energy of sadness, it's an energy of focusing on the negatives, on, on just stagnancy. The Four in general can be stagnancy or stability. But for this one, since it's in reverse, you can see that leaves are growing back. So in death, there is growth. In loss, there is rebirth. There is something, whatever is taken is given back. See, whatever has rotten, whatever has dried, will be replenished with something new. Similar thing. What you lost, you get back. What you lost, you get back. So this is a very straightforward reading, although it's a very sad reading. At the back of your deck, you have here the Five of Cups. So again, sadness. But that sadness that you're focusing on, that sadness... You can see here that out of the five cups, four are already broken. One is left. One is left. And I'm getting chills saying that. So this four of cups, this sadness, this stagnancy that you felt, it's already ending. And the only thing that remains is your chance to have something again. So um, I will have to read I will have to, to end your reading here. File number um File number three, this this deck really, whenever I use this, I <laughs> funny because um file number one's deck, the story of you know, the story of the first deck elemental wisdom. I also got this deck from that person. And this and she told me that this deck usually just really gives you those messages that are slap in the face, which sometimes are too much to bear. But for your specific pile, um File number three, I will have to leave your reading here um, as I, I don't think that there is something more that we should pry um, with the universe. But know that the universe embrace you. Whoever has left is with you. They will give you something. They will Whatever you lost will be replaced in the same manner. In death, there is life. And this really, whatever has troubled you, whatever has made you sad, Whatever has left you at a standstill, your life at a standstill, it's starting to move in, you know, it's just starting to replenish itself. So um, my condolences, um, pile number three, um, and whatever it is that you lost, I, I hope that this knowing that something is coming for you will give you a certain level of comfort. So um, that's it. File number three, thank you so much for staying with me. And I hope that this has been able to somehow help you. And um, yeah, I will see you in your next reading, file number three. Bye.